Hello, we are in Bosphorus and I have a very important guest. My guest is very important director in Japan. Welcome, Yuri. How are you? Good, what about you? Thanks. Please explain yours and project, please. Yes, yes, yes. My project is about a documentary, documentary called Carving the Divine. It's about 1,400 year old Japanese art, uh, the tradition of Japan. Uh, sculptors of Japan. So it's a, a very important culture for Japanese people and I'm excited to uh, present it around the world. Uh, we will talk about your project. First of all, who is Yuri, your life? My life? Yes, yes. Uh, I was born in Japan, of course, and I grew up in Japan and I was surrounded by uh, Buddhist objects. Uh, Buddhist furniture, Buddhist sculptures, because my father was a Buddhist furniture maker. So that's how I entered into this world when I was little. And when I uh, grew up and we went to the United States, I started studying cinema. And I saw Japan from outside. And for the first time in my life, I grew appreciation for the culture uh, that I brought up in. So I went back to Japan and started making this documentary called Carving the Divine, which I'm going to be presenting. I know you love different cultures. What do you think about Turkish culture? Oh my gosh, I don't know where to even start. So uh, my first Turkish, uh, my, my first foreign friend, uh, actually he was a uh, Turkish. So when I started studying English in the United States, uh, I met him and he told me a lot about the Turkish culture. And I uh, grew a fascination toward the, uh, Turkish culture because it's a, such an ancient history. So you cannot even imagine how old Istanbul was. I, w I was fascinated with uh, the culture of Constantinople, uh, culture of a uh, uh, Byzantine Empire, uh, uh, the culture of the uh, Ottoman Empire, and of course the 20th century uh, Turkish hero, Aratürk. Thanks. Uh, if I say Istanbul, what do you know about this city? Well, again, you know, you, you don't even, I don't even know where to start, but you know, one of the striking things that I saw was, uh, of course, Hagia Sophia. So, such a profound, long history, and the way it was built by Byzantine Emperor, and later turning into mosque, now it's a museum. So it shares both Christian and the Islamic culture. Uh, what kind of place you can see that? I cannot even imagine. How do you feel now? Now we are on the Asian side. That is Europe. What do you think about this? What do I think? <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful, of course. And, uh, you know, I imagine what life was like, like uh, 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, where this place was uh, the center of the trade. And, uh, you know, all the people had to come here uh, for uh, important trade and uh, all the riches and golds and the, the spices and the, uh, everything came here. So it just, uh, you know, uh, brought up, brought up my imagination. Who is Kaon Seki? Konseki. Konseki is a uh, Buddhist woodcarver. He's the master. Uh, he is a student of uh, Korin Saito. Korin Saito is a grandmaster. Uh, together, they work together and create uh, greatest, greatest great Buddhist art of Japan, sculptors of Japan, sculptures of Japan. His main subject? Actually, this is a documentary. Yes. So we'll just to show uh, the way uh, things are there. We have a very little uh, talking head interview. So uh, the problem is to show a life of Japan or Japanese people. It is very difficult to get the real story of Japanese people by interview because we don't talk that much. We try not to talk our emotions. So uh, it is better to show what's going on uh, in front of camera rather than uh, showing uh, what's going on by interview. Your surname is Seki, uh, Kaon Seki. Uh, you are family? Yes, uh, he's my relative, yes. Your grandfather or uh, what's we see? Uh, something like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad, 
this issue is very important for you because your history, your tradition. It's true. Mm -hmm. Oh, how I uh, started? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, uh, as I said earlier, uh, when I was a little, I was surrounded by Buddhist uh, sculptures, uh, furniture, and something like that. So when I was a little, I didn't think of it because it was just a family business. And uh, fast forward, so I got interested in cinema when I was in high school and went to the United States and studied uh, studying cinema and started meeting people from different countries, uh, different cultures. And I saw Japan for the first time in my life outside, outside of Japan. In Japan, I was just a Japanese, but I didn't even know that I was Japanese. But in the different countries, I definitely can recognize that I was Japanese. So from that perspective, I saw Japan for the first time uh, in my life from outside. And I saw the culture that I grew up in, uh, environment that I was grew up in was somewhat very special. So that's why I started working on this documentary because if I was going to do something in my life, I wanted to do something meaningful to me, meaningful to my people and meaningful to the people around the world. And this 1,400 year tradition is something that I wanted to work on. Which festival you enter about this documentary movie? Uh, I've, uh, uh, I have submitted many festivals around the world. Uh, so far, uh, we premiered uh, Madrid International Film Festival, uh, Australia Independent Film Festival, and uh, uh, Kyoto Earthquake, and many other film festivals, including uh, Children's Film Festival, uh, Inter uh, Universal Kids Film Festival in Istanbul as well. But many festivals, yes. <laughs> Welcome. I cannot even remember. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. You have any uh, new project? Well, maybe I'll do something about Istanbul. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> uh, there are a lot of uh, Japanese persons living here. Maybe Japanese in Istanbul is a new subject. Yes, actually, the Kyoto, Japan, and the Istanbul, they are uh, sister cities. It's a very interesting. The Kyoto is ancient capital of Japan, and the Istanbul is the uh, ancient capital of the world. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we are honored to have uh, Istanbul as a sister city in Japan, Kyoto. So it's very interesting. What do you think about the Japanese cinema? Japanese cinema, in my opinion. Yes. Well, we have a lot of great cinemas, uh, a lot of great movies uh, in Japan, especially all days, especially uh, studio time, where we didn't have a TV. So Kurosawa, Inagaki, uh, those people are from that period of time. Nowadays, people don't watch movies that much because we have an internet and we have a TV, but there are some movies out there. But for me, uh, Japanese cinema has turned into something, uh, I'm not sure, but it's, a, it's a losing the gl glorious of all days. So uh, we focus more on technology, we um, mo focus more on modern culture, and we have a difficult time focusing on our traditional culture. So that's another reason why I want to push this movie forward because 1,400 year old culture, what is it? What is more ancient than that in Japan? Very uh, few things are more ancient than 1,400 years old. Uh, what do you think about children's future? You mean new, new generation? Yes. Yes, yes. Well, some people are very aware of uh, uh, where we came from as a Japanese, but many of the people, they're not interested in, uh, let's say, all culture, they say. So they're more interested in what's going on right now and uh, what kind of new technology uh, that makes their life better. But you know, that, you know what we did, that our ancestors did in the past, uh, there were reasons for uh, things that our ancestors did. So, you know, I often say uh, Japanese people are very spiritually empty because we forgot about the, uh, how we were before. Uh, you know, religion, uh, tradition, uh, we uh, pay attention more to Western culture, American culture, and forgetting about uh, who you are. And it's uh, very dangerous because if we uh, 
people around the world only uh, rely on American culture, Western culture, we're going to be all the same. And we won't be able to appreciate the differences we have. So, yes, I think uh, it is important for young Japanese people to pay a little bit more attention to uh, our uh, tradition and, uh, let's say, old culture. Yes. Thanks. This movie is important for this reason, because children must learn traditional life. Okay. What's next? What do you want to do? What do I want to do? Well, to me, this documentary is very important. So uh, I cannot think of anything else other than pursuing uh, spreading uh, this documentary around the world. If I leave this documentary right now and start working on other projects, then this is project is going to be a half ass because I, I'm the only person who truly care about this project at this moment. And, uh, and that's why I do social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, together, they work together and promote my website and promote the documentary and promote the entire culture of this Buddhist uh, sculpture making. So uh, yes, I'm 100% in it and uh, there's nothing there to stop me. So that's what I'm at right now. So you are the director, you are the cinematographer and writer yes. and producer. Yes. Isn't it hard for you? Yes, I will never do it again. Next time, I need uh, more people to work with me. <laughs> <laughs> but I was young, I was naive. And I thought I could do a a everything. You know the American director, uh, Roberto Rodriguez? He did a movie called uh, El Mariachi. So he won a Sundance Film Festival when he was uh, 25 or something. And he went to Mexico and he did everything by himself and, uh, you know, almost did everything by himself and uh, he's a true author. He's uh, uh, somebody uh, who did everything by himself. I thought I could do the same. But you know what? Big mistake. When you make a movie, you need a team. And I would never do it again, I swear. <laughs> Okay, uh, thanks uh, for this interview. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.